This is the unit three FRQ question, progress number one. Um, this is a design a lab type problem. So let's go ahead and look at this question. Uh, one of the things I would suggest that you do for all these problems is as you read the question, kind of circle some main ideas. So we have this apparatus, uh, has a string of length L attached to a block of mass M. The other ends collected connected to a motor, rotates, causing the block to move in a radius r at a speed vt. Uh, string makes an angle theta. So you just want to get in the habit of kind of uh, highlighting what variables you're given in the problem. And then you want to look at what you're asked for. So the student's going to make a measurements and create a graph. Okay, so at some point you're going to need to make a graph that you're going to try to estimate the acceleration g due to gravity. So that's your ultimate goal is you want to try to find little g in this problem. Okay, they can adjust the meter to make different speeds of the block. So it looks like it's easy to change the speeds. Um, I did say meter, I meant motor. So anyway, first question is um, basically you're going to draw an FBD on this. So um, hopefully you can see it's pretty obvious that you have gravity pulling down, right? So that's our FG. And then you have... Uh, the tension in the string, we can call that T or F sub T, whatever you want to call it. And that's it. Those are the only two forces asking on it. Now you really shouldn't do this. You're going to do it on the little drawing that they have. So we're going to go ahead and draw this out, FG. On any FBD, you do want to see, are they asking for, do they want it drawn to scale? In this case, no, um, they didn't say anything about it. Typically when they want it drawn to scale, they're gonna give you like a little grid here. That's kind of your sign that they do want it to draw to scale, okay? Now, if we were to draw this to scale, let's just do it kind of for fun here. Actually, I pretty much already did draw it to scale now that I look at it. The key idea is that the amount of um, tension going up should be balanced out with this force of gravity here. So this length, and this length should essentially be the same. All right, now we're going to go ahead and derive the equation. Um, so they're asking for the acceleration in terms of um, m, lambda, and any physical constants. Again, when you do this, make sure your answer only has this and any physical constants, such as um, little g. So if we go back to our FPD, remember we had gravity going down and tension going this way. What you want to do is kind of break this tension into its components. In other words, there's a Tx going this way and a Ty going this way. Okay, so if we do our pure xy free body, here's our Tx, here's our Ty, and then we have a gravity coming down. Let's just write that as mg here. So hopefully you noticed uh, this is in balance, Ty and mg. So we could write this as Ty should equal mg. Okay, and then Tx, this is the piece that's providing the centripetal force keeping us in the circle. So we could write this as Ma, Mac, right? And then we have our two equations. Basically, we just want to kind of combine these two together. So remember, uh, if you look at our triangle here, Ty should basically be Ty is T, this is the adjacent angle, so we'll write this as T cosine theta and Tx should be t sine theta. Okay, um, so let's combine these together. Um, let's go ahead and solve for ty, I guess. Um, so let's write this as t equals ty um, divided by cosine of theta. Okay, uh, let's move this up a little bit. And we'll go ahead and substitute this into here. So what are we going to get? Tx equals Ty sine theta divided by cosine theta. And then remember way back here at the beginning, we could write Tx is Mac, Ty is Mg. And then notice sine theta over cos theta, we could just write that as tan theta. Okay, uh, one final step, uh, look at that, mass is cancel. So our final answer would be AC equals G tan theta. 
check your answer with the original question. Uh, we're, we have G, we have theta. Um, we're allowed to use M theta or any constants. And again, theta, uh, G is a physical constant. So the next part of the question is asking to actually go ahead and design this lab. So let's look at this equation here that we've just derived. Um, AC equals G tan theta. So we're trying to solve for G. Remember in the original question they said go ahead and um, do something where you can graph it to solve for G. So we're going to say if we rearrange this, notice we have G equals AC over tan theta. Okay, so if we want to make a graph, notice we somehow need to have G. This could be like our graph here, right? AC could be our y-axis and then tan theta could be our x-axis. So then we have to figure out how we're going to figure out AC. So again, if we can do this, if we can graph that, y, that'll give us um, uh, a slope, right? y over x. If we do that, we can then find little g. So AC, if you remember, that's going to be v squared over r, um, where v is a velocity. And you're going to have to figure out some way to find v. Okay, so, so if you have something moving in a circle, and if you could find the time for one revolution, you can find the velocity, right? Because the time, the, the distance, remember velocity equals distance over time, and the distance for one revolution is going to essentially be the circumference, so 2 pi r, and then we can use a stopwatch or something to find the time. Okay, so anyways, notice some things we're going to have to figure out. We're going to have to figure out the time. I'm not going to write this all out, but you want the time, right? You can use like a stopwatch. Um, you're going to need to find the radius. Okay, for the radius, you could simply use a ruler. Um, and then you are somewhere oh, way back here, if you remember, we have our theta. Somehow we're going to have to find the theta. Um, you could, I guess, just use a protractor. It might be hard to do when it's in motion. Um, so you could also measure the, say, the length of the string, right? Um, again, use a ruler to do that. And then you can just use some simple trig. So this is our L. This is our R. You do some simple trig to find theta. Okay, so you're going to want to write up the procedure for this. Um, hopefully you got um, the gist um, of the procedure that we're going to use. Um, one of the key things you do want to make sure that you do is you do want to have uh, multiple um, levels of your independent variable. I call these IV, right? So in this case, you want to maybe change the velocity. Something needs to be changed. In this case, they tell you you can easily change the velocity. So we'll go ahead and change the velocity. Um, now, changing the velocity, that's going to change the, the radius and the lambda. So you will have to measure those out. Um, you know, as we said with our ruler. And you also want to always talk about multiple trials. So make sure you're doing it like three times, take an average. Uh, or in this case, maybe it could be sufficient if you said, instead of just doing for one period, you did it, say, for 20 periods, and then divide by 20. That would be good, too. OK, so the last part of the question is, uh, they want you to say how you're going to create your graph to find little g. Uh, I kind of did this in the last page. Uh, recall we had something like, what do we have? Well, g equals um, ac over tan theta. OK, um, you could, if you kind of describe in your procedure how to find ac, you could graph y on your y-axis be your ac, and on your x-axis would be your tan theta. I feel like that would be fine as long as you describe how to get AC. Remember, AC was V squared over R. And then you describe how to find V. V is 2 pi R over T. Um, if you describe how to get it, then you could kind of graph those two. If you want to you know, make a big sub and kind of break it down even further, we could do that as well. So what would we get? G equals V squared over r tan theta. Again, you could probably say this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, v squared and r tan theta. I feel like that would be OK as well. If you want to go even further, we could do that. So g, if we sub in v squared, so what's that? 4, four pi squared. 
um, times r squared divided by r tan theta. Okay, uh, oop, I missed my t, didn't I? t squared, there we go. Okay, and notice it's getting super messy. We can cancel out our r, cancel out our r. And again, if you could just simply plot 4 pi squared on your y-axis and t squared tan theta on your x-axis, um, that would work as well. Okay, and I think in the solution manual, read over the solution manual, they give you even a fourth way of doing it. All those should be fine as long as, again, you're saying, okay, the slope, right, all this is your slope. Y over X is going to be equal to your slope. So you find the slope of the graph, and then you're just going to go ahead and, in this case, if, you, if you're doing this whole thing right here, you could say that that's going to be equal to little g. All right, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.